I'm pretty much going to just read over the whole slide presentation, save your questions for later, and we will cover the whole thing. I want to show the whole process here, and then after that, we are going to uh, sit there and talk about the different things. You could ask whatever questions you want at that time. So, uh, like I said, the review for the slide presentation is just telling the story. Good. And uh, all we're going to do, we're going to have various people when we're done with this. Oh, we have a Mina. That's good. Well, hold on a second. Hi, Mina. I, I was about two slides away from in. Hi, Mina, today. <laughs> we'll talk about it. We're going to have Glenn Withrow. He's our shop foreman. He got elected with, back when we were doing the, the bench for the hospital system. And actually, Buzz Adams, that's actually, Buzz he was, Adams. He was self-appointed, but that's all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Buzz was supposed to be here today, but broke. He couldn't get here. And then we have myself, and I'm going to cover differently. Canes for Heroes. Okay. And this is going to explain about how we got Mixed up with them? No, how did we get mixed up? <laughs> I don't know. Let's cover that. This is just explaining how we met up with them. Talking to Mina, she had told us about the canes and stuff. She had her dad come over from South Carolina. And when we had a Veterans Day show, our, the same thing were coming up here on, on the 10th. They came over there and they were our guests here that showed the canes and the program. She, they explained everything, how we got started and everything. And in a minute, I'm going to have her come up here. That is Mina Little and Tim Alex. Alex. Yep. I, I know I have yep. it written down there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's, it's on there. All right, Mina and Tim. So, Mina, you want to tell us what you have, and then we'll go ahead. And I'm Mina Little, and uh, my dad is Tim Alex. And uh, yeah, I'm just trying to think how we did kind of meet or call or whatever, but um, we were just excited to kind of share the canes that he makes and um and he's kind of evolved um i guess it started about well my dad was a, Na a navy veteran and he was a welder on his ship so um he's always been a hands-on woodworking and just amazing he just uh invents the most craziest stuff i've ever seen and a lot of things come up on tv i'm like oh my god like the uh nails in the shoe that you aerate your yard while you're doing the mowing the grass I don't know if you've ever seen that but anyway he came up with that and then all of a sudden you see it on TV it's like crazy so he's just always coming up with something I guess but um, he's but his woodworking is definitely his his biggest thing so um, and he was at the Veterans Hospital um, for an appointment and uh, someone had mentioned something or he noticed someone walking needing the cane and um, so he just one day when he went back he and he had made one and then from then on, everybody kept asking him about them. And um, so, and then it just kept evolving from there's one cane that, the one that's got the handle lower um, that when you're, if you're sitting down, and that may have been one of his first ones because yeah, when he was, uh, there was someone that couldn't get out of a chair and someone said, can you make one that where this gentleman can get out of his wheelchair or, you know, and so he came up with that and then it just kept evolving and, um, and then when I started volunteering at the VA hospital, um, the minute I said I walked in through the hallway with a few on my arm, um, I couldn't even get to the volunteer service center to check in before somebody was asking me about the canes. So, and I just was giving them away, and they'd be gone before I even got there, and they were just so surprised and loved them. And um, anyway. Just, uh, we're very appreciative, especially since we're good friends for free. And um, so now the waiting list is unbelievable. And um, I can't even seem to get them to them quick enough. And um, they're calling me and when are you going to be in next to 
to bring in some canes. So then you guys came in and we came in, showed y'all traced it and just kind of um, evolved from there. So, and then you've uh, helped us ever since then. And with you guys' ideas and my dad's ideas, and that's as new as cane with the um, ribbon maple. Um, he's got the little accent piece on the side on the handle and um but he was trying to find an easier way to do it all one piece mm -hmm. and not have to do the handle separate um but i know you guys still like that other way so it's great i mean it's just it's all different um and these are some of his newest newest ones and he's doing the the ribbon maple um everywhere and he comes up with something new every week it seems and um and the big thing too is my dad had a second stroke and um but he's fine thank goodness and uh but he was i think within a week back in the wood shop that's where his heart is and um he is just yeah he's been through two knee replacements at the same time got him done all at once so he couldn't be away from the golf course that long so he said i might as well get it done now and um so yeah, he just, but Woodshop is all he likes to do. I'm not the greatest on the website. We try to do our little canes for um, Euro's website. And um, I try to keep that up for him. Um, and the only way we really, um, we there's like a little PayPal there that we get very little donations, but it's a huge help. And that's what, um, kind of how he survives with it. But with that second stroke, that was the, um, where again, Rob and uh, the Granite Woodworking has been great to just help us just populate these and keep them all going. So it's just a huge thank you um, for that. So, how many canes has your father made by now? Oh gosh, uh, you over. Yeah, I've got fifteen hundred a year or so or more. I mean, and then it's just it's been crazy. And then all of you guys, I mean, you've given me a hundred one time and sixty some one time. I mean, so yeah. So it's been a huge help. But my only thing is trying, the patches are very expensive. So I've ordered them <coughs> online. He helped, um, Rob helped me find online a, a website and they're a lot cheaper that way. Um, I do have a donation coming in. I'm a real estate agent. So I've got a closing attorney that's gonna give us some money to go toward. And then I can, with all the canes you guys gave us, I can afford to get the patches and put them on there and give them out. So, um, but yeah, so, um, I don't know. Yeah. We put down here, Tom Beal made out this slide and he talks a little different to me. So I'll go over this and maybe rearrange things a little bit. But as a result of the presentation, we decided that GWA would become involved and help provide the much needed canes for heroes. Now, we didn't really decide, we kind of asked permission to go ahead and work with them. You know, we didn't just say, we're going to do it. And they were happy to have it. So that was what happened. And then at that point, that's when the work began. Uh, we were able to procure some nice white oak from the sawmill they held at the Alexander site. And what it was is we did, we had somebody come in with a wood miser. We had three huge logs. They weighed like, I forget what it was, 8,000 pounds each. And we milled it up and we used that. It was white oak and we used it for make two benches for the Glancy Hospital System. They were the ones that donated the wood from their property. We had lots left over. So that's where we got the initial batch of uh, lumber that we used for this. And GWA held club events at a, a club event at Rob's Daycare for Adult. That's my shop. And we had a great response. There was, the first day there were 33 people working there. We divided into groups to accomplish the various tasks. Now, Larry labeled every workstation. One, this does this, two does this, <coughs> and it was Really efficient. We decided we divided into groups to accomplish the various tasks required. Work for the better part of Saturday, and then after most people left, Hans and a few people stayed over till it was dark at night that night. Okay, uh, we had all sorts of machines being operated. We blew circuit breakers repeatedly, and we thought with well, a 200 amp system we can't be blowing circuit breakers, and it turned out to be. Jerry Jones's mortising machine had a problem. It was overheating and popping the circuit breaker. There was nothing wrong with the rest of the system. Once we put that on its own fuse, it worked good. We had that along with two sanders or something, and it just kept going, or, or sander and something. But anyway, that was that. Uh, we accomplished a great deal the first day. From that day, the effort has continued with various work days at the daycare for adults. And at this point, we do hold, as long as we have some wood, 
uh, cane days on Tuesdays. You know, and not only are we holding cane days on Tuesdays, though, the people that are coming out, we're getting some of the same people every day, every Tuesday, and that's all on their expense. They pay for getting there, they pay for their lunches, they pay for everything else, so it's nice to have the volunteers that show up and actually do the stuff. And we will talk about, you know, more. Next Tuesday, we're going to be back into it. We do have a couple more sticks to go start cutting up. Okay. And everyone is welcome. So, and we'll, Larry's going to talk about the patterns after we're done with the slideshow. I saw him standing up. Okay. <laughs> the patterns did evolve from one to another. <coughs> to another. We, we took, the, like Nina said, we took the one that she brought over, traced it out on the paper to see what it was, and then we cut out some patterns for it. And Larry, Larry did most of the patterns of duplicating them and putting them out there and doing all this stuff. So he's going to talk about that. The boards required planing. It's just, we just put separate pictures in here. Here's a couple of, well, he started off, I didn't have this monster planer. I had a little DeWalt 13 inch, and we just wore it out. And there were some days when we were out there when we were going through the planer, we filled up the dust collection bin three times. It's a 55 gallon drum. We fill it out, dump it three times during the day of just planing mainly. And then we cut away our patterns. We had people on the scroll saw. Now we started off using the scroll saw, but mainly we used the band saw, and now we've gotten away from the scroll saw altogether. There were certain parts on here that we needed the scroll saw for because they were inside cuts. The K patterns are laid out on planks to get the most use of that, and Larry is going to explain that when we're done. Okay, these parts on the left up here are how we separated blanks. Well, we had it on here, we took a saber saw and cut it in between, got them over there, and then stacked them up, and then they go into the inside from there. We did bring in extra tools. You know, I have like two or three uh, saber saws at the time. We had people bring extra ones, and we, Larry, Larry brought a bandsaw, so we had three bandsaws there and different stuff. And anyway, once the canes were laid out, we cut them into smaller single cane pieces with the jigsaw. And I fixed that problem. I now have five bandsaws. We should not be short this time. Okay. <laughs> Okay, with the rough draft cut out, it was time to cut out the final shape. This was accomplished on a bandsaw by our expert bandsaw operators. I'll demonstrate how we did that later. So I, I don't, don't want to jump around too much here. Okay, then we applied the pre-cut pattern to the blanks and prepare them for shaping. We had several patterns that were used in various types of attachment methods on the canes. This will be better demonstrated when Larry talks about this subject. <laughs> you can see some of the different ones that are on there, and Larry will talk to that. Why we, we started off originally with like the one that was on the left over there, the, or the second cane from the end. That was what we started off with when she brought over to the house. And I traced it out and we started with that, and then we went to different evolutions throughout the whole thing. We'll, we'll cover all that. Okay. All right. Now it was time to go to the router table to put the final shape on the canes and the patterns because we put the patterns, we drew around the pattern, we drew it a little wider than what it needed to be, we cut them out on the bandsaw and then we took and we put those onto a pattern that Larry made on top of there and then we used a pattern following bit to go around to make the canes exactly the same shape. And this is all, and, and the part on the bottom that said watch your fingers because Buzz inspected it with his finger and it's still not completely healed. <laughs> okay, once cut to size and routed, it was time to sand the canes. We had sanding parties. Yeah. We, we did it all in here, but at one point, I had about 100 canes that needed to be the final step of taking steel wool and uh, mineral spirits. And Larry came over, we watched some James Bond movies, you know, for a couple of shows so we could sand them. But anyway, there was many people that helped out in the sanding. A lot of people really enjoy that part. And we used sanding machines, we used, did it by hand. You know, this is Joe. Joe loved doing this part of it. He, he, you know, we had a spindle sander. We were going to bring one in, but if you don't know what a spindle sander is, we'll point one out to you afterward here. But he spent hours on, you know, this part with a spindle sander. And then we have more sanding. This is uh, Tom's son. And he came over and helped. I had my grandsons in there a couple times. and different stuff, so we, we employed anybody that would come by there close enough. Okay, as a project evolved, we did, so did the cane design. Okay, we started the design, we had handles that were two handles, or a double, it came up on both sides. 
we did that for a while, but we found after a while we had a hard time getting in there. The production to do one or two was great, but if you're doing 50 or 60 of them, to get in there and make all the curves and the different stuff and then to handle the open parts on there to do that all got in the way. So if, if I was making one for like I did for my cousin, I did it almost exactly how the original pattern that she brought over here. You know, because I didn't mind taking the time for that, but if we're making like a hundred of them for the VA, we can make it a lot faster than that. Okay, and then we continue to evolve. This, are, this is in my garage because it was raining out that day. And you can see how we made them straight. We get away with a lot of different things on there. They're actually sturdier than having the little skinny ones coming off the side, just having one solid piece there. And it was a lot easier to make. A lot easier to cut on a bandsaw too. Okay, the purpose of the evolution was to save on material, facilitate a more efficient building process, and increase safety and the newer methods. We didn't have many accidents, but we did have a couple. Okay. While all this work was going on for forming the cane legs, other people worked on cutting out the handles. And we had a few people that just thoroughly loved shaping and cutting the handles. You know, wow. <laughs> it's not about love it or not. <laughs> well, well, it gets on there. But these are some of the examples. The first, the one on top is just a pattern. And I got that pattern actually going out on a website and looking at different canes. I thought, you know, this is simple. It fit right on there because we were going from double handle to the single. And you know, the second picture shows the double and, and the single, and then we have some of the cane handles on the next part. Okay, we determined the form, cutting, we had determined the form, and then uh, cutting the block to the appropriate shape, and the uh, Glenn's going to cover all the different parts on that, but we, we had to round it off, cut it, cut it on the band, so <coughs> shape it. It involved a whole lot of sanding, which I'm glad these guys were here because I don't like to do that. And handle attachment. We began with a uh, mortise and tenon, and Glenn is going to show that, and later on went to a domino, and I'll show a little bit of how we use the domino to attach it afterward. It was much faster. I, I like both of them. The mortise and tenon, the double handles are nice, and I like the looks and the feel of it, but you have to fit every handle exactly, putting a mortise on both of them and the tenons in it, and get them, you had, it was just quite a while on every handle. And the sanding of the handles was done by our sanding experts, Andrew in the shop and Walt in the house. Andrew would come over there from the start of the day to the end of the day and sand handles. You know, that was it. And Walt took a bag home and said, all right, I'll do it there. I don't have to be here with you guys. Once the leg and handle were shaped and sanded, they were assembled. And that's when I talk about the process. Uh, Glenn got involved in that a lot of trying to get each handle because make you can't just do them ahead of time when you're doing the double handles but we were able to do that with the domino and so we had to match them all perfect you match them glue them and then tighten them up so each handle and the leg were drilled with a domino machine perfectly centered horizontal and vertical might say glenn had a handle on it each handle was fitted to each leg glued and any gaps were all filled in and Alas, the handles and legs have become one time for the finish. I could not, I've got four lays and couldn't use any of them because we had sticks in between and the handles were spread all the way through. We did come up with a solution for that for next. Bob has gun, will spray. Yeah. We set up these canopies one time and he sat out there all day long. We just have to bring him a bottle of water once in a while and he'd just keep working. You know, but we, uh, okay. We put a, coat of sanding sewer on all these. At that time we were actually hanging them up by, we put a little hooks on the end and hung them up and later on we changed the lane down on the table there. But, okay, after the sanding sewer you had to sand it to get that off. So the sanding sewer, then we used 220 grit to sandpaper, had to sand all those. And the weather, <laughs> while mostly cooperative, cooperative, there were days that it did not. And it just, we had a rain come down that just completely crushed that thing from the time the rain started to the time it was crushed was about five minutes it was the biggest storm i ever saw since i was here so you put the sandy sewer on it you sand it with 220 after that after everything's dry and then you put lacquer on it then we have another sanding party now the final sanding is with mineral spirits and steel wool if you take mineral spirits and steel wool put them together if you feel the cane uh, we've got one i'll pass out there that's really rough. You can feel from the lacquer. You know, you spray it on, it looks good, but if you actually feel it, it's not smooth. Mineral spirits. 
will not take anything off the lacquer. You know, it keeps it wet. Put that on with the steel wool and it just turns up. As a final prep, we put a three inch, in, we took a mortise and bit three inch and went in about eighth inch deep on each cane so we could put the patch on each side. You know, now when we first started making some that we were giving away, we only put the patch on one side and Lena said she had more money, she wanted it on both. <laughs> They did love them that way, but I know. It, it does it's look better with both. And the, one advantage of putting them on boats, like the marine one that's over there, it has a different marine patch on one side than it does the other. So if you wanted a variety, you could do that. Right. It, it, it did cost them more money. There were canes. You know, this is the only picture we took of the, you know, this is the first group that was putting it together or, or you know, on the finishing portion of it. We didn't have the 30 something people lined up. Okay, so each cane, is custom fit to the vet. Now we're just giving it to her without cutting it off and people at the VA are actually cutting them off? Yeah, they kind of adjust them. Yeah, yeah, like yeah they adjust it like to the person. Six inches. Yeah. Just what, he just kept them, yeah. Now the, the cane height, you know, he was showing should both bend your wrist. You put it down, you, you should be able to just about straighten out your arm, not completely, but you don't want to have them too short, too big. Okay, and then after you adjust it, it'll fit just like that. Just like riding a bike, you know, you have your seat so your legs are almost completely straight when you go around. It's about the same thing we set up the cane. All right, well, these are some of the people that were the veterans that received them. This is off of your website, I think. We don't see much of this because we just give it to Mina and Mina <coughs> puts it out to whoever it is. The, that's Popeye on the right there. You know, Dale is one of our people. We have given them out, some of them from our group itself, rather than just giving them to all to Mina. And we've probably given out about eight or ten to people that were in veterans. We have uh, one sitting back there that he's used for years and is still working. The cane or the person? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm hoping he will live for a lot more years. Yeah. Nice to Mina. She gave me the yeah, there it is. It's yeah. right, right there. I know. Okay. Now, the summary of what we've done. We partnered with Mina and Tim to support their cane effort, held regular cane days on Tuesdays, and we provided over 360 canes. So what our plans are for the future, we, for funding for the wood and consumables, we have started a GoFundMe account to help for the cost of wood, consumables, uh, different things. We actually, I was going to skip a line on there, but we we want to place advertisements. We're going to take a few canes, set them up on a display, maybe make a case, and then put a donation bucket or something at the VFW, American Legion, and see if we can get some people there to donate. You know, it, we've been able to do all right. The biggest thing was getting enough wood, which we has been a problem. You know, I mean, if, if you go out and buy wood, even the cheaper stuff's going to cost you, you know, four hours a board foot or something. So we wouldn't be able to make many. So we want to continue to hold the cane days every Tuesday. We'd love to have a bunch more people out there this Tuesday. And then we received all this this week. You know, that that's half of my garage for this big pile here, which really turned out nice. And uh, it is almost always open. This is the garage itself. Any contributions anybody would be like would be nice. And I'm not just talking about money. The attendance on there on, on Tuesday, we do have that whole stack of wood. Okay, we, uh, like I said, we do have the GoFundMe site if anybody wanted to go there. Uh, the attendance for the cane days, we're going to do them every Tuesday, you know, unless something major happens. You know, I'll send out an email to the people that come there one time. So, we'll, so we need to get people there so we can make canes up so I can park back in my garage. Send you a board. So I, I granted. You did fine. I granted. And, and the guy that did donate it, I didn't tell you, was one of Mina's clients. They, she's selling his house, and he is right now living in a loft that he put inside the barn, so he rents out the house. So at the end of the month, they're closing on it, and they've got to be out in 14 days after that. So he needed to clear it out, and he was happy to give it to us. So we're glad to have it. We usually start, people start getting there about 9 o'clock and we usually get cranked up 9, 30, 10, depending on what we're doing, especially this Tuesday where we have so much that we're going to be able to do, you know, the, starting from the first steps that Larry's going to talk about, we'll have to go there. Ways that we can actually help though, the contribution is money is, is helping. With this wood, we don't need to buy it for a while, but we do have a lot of stuff that are consumables. Uh, we have a few people that are really good at breaking 
bandsaw blades. We wear them out besides breaking them. We, but you know the the lacquer itself. Every time we do it, we're using about three gallons of lacquer. And it's a uh, hundred and some dollars for that. The patches. We would like to supply the patches. If we get enough money to the GoFundMe sites, we're going to buy the patches. So, so the attendance is uh, for Canes Day Tuesday. It would be helpful to have people for that. Helping to find sources of wood is a nice help because a lot of people, you know, I got somebody that's got a stack of dry lumber, they'd be glad to have it. Okay, uh, suggesting contacts for places that we put the flyers and displays and get the word out. Anything else that would be, be welcome. And thank you. Okay. That's it. All right, now we're going to turn over to Larry to do his part there. Do you want to put the screen up or do you, do you need to draw anything on the board? So when we first got, first thing we got from Nina was this cane right here that our daddy made. So we took this cane and decided that we would reproduce that. And to do that, we, uh, cut patterns for that, pattern cut it, and then we laid patterns out on boards like this. Laid, laid two, two canes on a board and um, cut out the bandsaw, ran it through the router, and pattern cut it. And that went all right to begin with, but this hoe here presented a problem. We have to go back and cut this with a band, um, scroll saw, and then pattern cut inside, and it became an, an issue as, as we progressed. And also this pattern, as you see, using this bit is not that, not much of a pattern, so we, we went to a larger pattern. The next group looked like this. We doubled the pattern, and that worked all right, but um, if you're not used, used to using a pattern bit, this can be scary because you've got your hands right here. You come around an end like this on end grain and it's going to jump on you. We were using this bit. So we went to a better bit and this is a upward spiral bit, pat double bearing. And from th that, as we progressed in our patterns, we would also, um, I'll come back to that. So, since Buzz uh, almost lost a finger, I went back and said, safety wise, we put handles on the pattern, which is a much better, much better deal. And we were do doing double face tape originally. Double face tape works okay on this direction, but on lateral, I mean, up and down works, but on lateral pressure, it was coming off. So we went back and started using pin nails in the patterns. You can see where we're pin nailing it and laying the patterns out to get the most out of the... Uh, so we have to have enough board so we can put two um, patterns beside each other. If you get them too close, we're cutting them out on a jigsaw. And the jigsaw's the original cuts are too close, so we're, we're trying to have at least enough to, to cut a pat that much wood for a pattern. And if you look at the cane, the cane is actually more than three quarters of an inch, so we're using four quarter boards to make a cane. At least four quarter, if not more. So this has a double contact handle like this. If you do them individually, that works fine. Um, Glenn's going to show you how we connected this. But aligning these two pieces up got to be a real hassle or time consuming when we're looking at production level. So we changed from that to a single grip handle with, with um, a connection. And this is as comfortable and a, a lot more um, stable. Also, this hoe went away. When we went from the double handle, this thing came up just like this, and it was coming out like this. And we thought that worked great because we just continued this on farther. But when we went to a single handle, we went and put it over there. We put this out farther, like I said, above here, extended that, and put the handle on. We found out that was really backwards. So the first year, all of them that we did were like this, because when you grab onto it, like here, this is supposed to be back here, like here. So next year, I rechanged the pattern, put it out this way, so the handle meets up, and you'll see that on other ones that are in that direction. You know. 
We had a couple this year where people put on backwards and glued it on. We, we made it right. After we pattern shaped it, originally we used a 45 degree chamfer on them. We've moved away from that. That way, that's nice. You have to be careful. There's no hand, we can't put safety handles on the canes when we uh, chamfer them and, and uh, round over them. Your variance on the thickness of the cane keeps you from using the bull nose on the edge because you're now cutting an exact round here. And if you look, this rounded this on this cane is not the same as around on that one because the canes vary in thickness. So the bull nose. Right. You know, yeah, that part didn't work out good. You want to see me do this on a router? <laughs> no, I think we're good. <laughs> this curve right here on the router can be very sensitive because you're hitting end grain here. Um, up here, you have to be careful when you come to the end. And down here, you want to be careful. We, we weren't going to the end because it, you can see this cane right here didn't go to the end because if you get to the end and you hit that end grain, either the, the cane is going to fall out of your hand or it's going to splinter it. So it takes a little, a little practice on the router to do it right. And for the most part, we're going to end up cutting all of them off. So, you know, even our tallest people that were trying that were like six foot four or something, they're way too tall for them. So you can see this is much safer. Okay. okay. Glenn, would you like to show us uh, how you're doing the mortise and tendon? First of all, how many of you gentlemen in here, ladies too, are flat workers? Consider yourself flat workers. 90% of the crowd, right? I'm a bowl turner. So here I am, first time I ever used a mortise machine. Tell you how we got started. Typical handle when we're starting is just a block of wood. You can see that we have a pattern drawn on here to, that's the way we want it to end up. We do it on top and bottom. I have one mortise already cut in here and how we determine where that mortise goes. I drew it on here, centered it, when we first started, we took each individual cane, each block of wood, and done everything separate. We tried to go with that method, but we found out that uh, even though we numbered the, cane, uh, the handle and the cane, they still got uh, lost in the shuffle during the sanding because they hadn't been glued together yet. We now cut this up. I can pre-cut this then typically it'll go to walt on this type handle. Bandsaw it out, the pattern, and then he takes it from there and goes typically to this shape, something similar to it. Uh, each one varies because all of these blocks of wood weren't the same size. I think now we will try to make them all the same size because it just makes it so much easier to uh, do everything. Um, as you look at different canes, you'll see that they, they take, they are custom made. I mean, it, it doesn't go through a machine, so everything is custom. You need to put the mortise in here, in here, before you make the cane. If you don't, sometimes this edge ends up lower than the other, so it offsets and the cane goes like that, so your mortise is going in crooked. Now I put the I say now I, but it's, it's whoever's going to do the mortising. Needs to do it on a flat surface. Uh, this is centered in the piece of wood. You can flip it in for in and, and, and cut it. Um, typically use a, a, a 3 8 bit in the machine. Um, I haven't found a real good way to be able to put a stop block in here and, and hit it exactly yet. Uh, still working on that, but I find it's just as easy to hit the one on one side, come over and hit the other one. Come back like this, hit the other side, do the same thing on the other. That centers it, 
this makes it a, basically a standard. One of the problems that we had that when you have, at, at most of you being flat workers, you know that if you control it, if you do everything from start to finish, you know it's going to be exact or you can make it exact. If you've got 33 as we had people there at one time cutting these things out, nobody gets them the same. Um, even when you go through the router or what have you. This won't go straight in there. It's made that it needs to be cut back uh, all the way around. Cane looks better if this edge goes down flat against that with a little bit of a ring around it. Uh, in this situation, this one's set up for about a sixteenth to an eighth all the way around. Doesn't always work out. The way we accomplish that, uh, getting that ring on there, it's done with a bandsaw. Also with this machine over here. Um, and sometimes with a chisel if you, you've got no other way. Um, we've, uh, we can raise this up and, and actually cut this just barely into the side and come back with a chisel and take it out. Um, it works out for us. As we went to this, the single handle, I refer to this as a T handle and this is a D handle. We went through various uh, patterns uh, looking for the right one. And uh, by the way, the same block of wood makes both handles. This happens to be this particular handle work for 2017 and 18. We label them uh, because it's so easy to get mixed up. This just happens to be the uh, thing was too wide and this was a cutoff from a, uh, a, a block of wood. Uh, this is where the domino machine comes in. You center domino machine on this. Center it on here. And then it becomes a simple process of gluing that on. If you can see this, you can see that the handle is, is sanded a little bit back from the edge. That means that you need to, to do some additional work on this. The actual mating goes okay, but the looks are not right. So you have to sand these and make it work. When we route this, we don't route it all the way to the end because it typically, when the router will go over it, it'll cut more off than you want. You don't want this edge right here routed on this, this side. You want that flat surface to be in there. Um, again, we clamp, once it's clamped, we glue it. Uh, there's a lot of work in this little handle, either one. Uh, Walt does a lot of it at home. Andrew does a lot of it in the shop. And some of you other guys had some uh, work in this also. Also, also these, these pieces of wood just happen to be perfect. We have used a little bit of everything. Um, I have one here that... Uh, this one has the pattern drawn on it. But if you'll notice, there's stain on this side right here. That don't matter to us because it's all going to be sanded away anyway. Um, I had a bunch of uh, walnut pieces that were three or four foot long that were wide enough for what we used. And I wasn't going to use them for anything else. So if any of you other guys have things like that you want to uh, donate to the uh, calls, uh, we can use any kind of mahogany or we just don't want any pine. Um, but in each of these, each of these scenarios here, uh, your final sand work and everything has to be done by hand uh, when when the two are fit together. Uh, we may get it down to the point where we don't have to, but I don't I don't think we ever will. One of our challenges was that uh, Tim does most of his work by hand, and for us to utilize all of Rob's tools and so that we can mass produce. It's been a challenge to get everything working right and everybody working together. We can use all the help we can get. All right.
you're up. So we moved over to the dominoes. The dominoes were simpler to put in. We didn't have to cut a mortise. We didn't have to cut a tenon. Um, most of you are probably familiar with the domino. The dominoes themselves, well, they kind of look like a domino. Um, so one of the challenges we had with the domino cut, uh, cutter is it has adjustments which allow you to set it so it will drill its hole grab this in the middle vertically or vertically like this one of the challenges was that our canes are not all the same since we the wood came from wherever we could get it some of it was so thick some of it was thicker and so forth so what we did was we would take a batch and measure the thickness of the canes, the, uh, the legs. And I'd mark them. And in fact, we used millimeters at the time, so we got anywhere from 23 millimeters to 30 millimeters, and we'd mark them and we'd stack them in. This is the 23s, these are the 24s, these are the 25s. So the reason for that was we could adjust the domino to cut in the center of a 23 millimeter thick cane and then when it came to the 24s, we adjusted it. The problem, the reason we did that was, and let me walk over here, is that it wasn't a problem if the handle, let me try and show that, if the handle is wider than the cane. You sand it, it tapers, it really works out quite nice. The problem was if the handle, let me walk up, it got to the side. So you'd end up with a, if you didn't do that, you'd have a cane where it was, well, I was trying to show this dimension, where it was flat here and very thick on this side. And you end up doing a lot of sanding to try and make it look good. So the challenge was basically to categorize the canes as to what the thickness was, and then adjust the domino for each different group. That's pretty much what it was. If you've ever used a biscuit joint or a plate joiner, this is very similar, except for you have a much tighter bit. When you put that domino, when you put the hole in it, it's going to fit exactly into the hole that you make, and enough that you don't put glue on stuff all of it ahead of time. If you're making a whole panel, you would take and cut like a roll. If, you, if you've got a board, you're putting like eight dominoes in, you glue the side of the board, but not the domino. If you put the domino in it and you got glue on the inside, you can't push it in because it's, you know, the pressure of it around there is not letting the air escape. So when you put them on there, now you're just like anything else here for a biscuit joiner, you can flip this up, put it down, and go down different angles. But for what we're using it at, we lay it flat. This part there, when you pull back, it's pulling out the cutter. There's different bits for different size. This one's for uh, what's called number eight, it'll be eight millimeter for the domino. And you can adjust the distance. You see how thick that is, how far it is. I want that thing when it goes on there so it goes a little bit more than halfway up that domino. So we know when it goes in the hole, this thing's going to go all the way in and have a little bit of extra on it. And it, it's similar to doing a biscuit joint, but you can put this on. You have lines that you're not going to be able to see from there. I'll, I'll bring it over afterward. But you have a line over the center here. You put it right on wherever the line is for your handle where you want to line it up with. Right in the center, hold pressure on it. Turn it on. And when you go to put that in, into wood, you want to just barely start it where you can hear it engage. If, you, if it's back and just shove it in there, then it's going to have a clean cut. So you put it in where it engages and then you can just ram it through there. But this is what it ends up with on here. And I'm not sure if I have the right size. No, I have a different size ten or not. But we do the same thing here. And like you're saying, when we do the handles, we got them all pretty much the same thickness when we're at this stage. So we know we can have them in the center. The part of lining it so it's in the cane, so we're right in the center of the handle, that's more to what you're doing with the, hand, the leg part of it itself. Show me, Show me, All right, let me take this over to the camera, over to the stand here. We had a couple of different type of jigs we set up, and all we did was pretty much take one of the parts here, cut it out with air, and put it on there. We 
take this and tighten, tighten it up to the stand. And that would just take one and another and go through the whole stack of them. Because these, there's no adjustment on. Pretty much, once you get them in there, we have the same thickness on all of them. But when it comes time for the cane, we had a different one that we set up there. So uh, it works something like this. Okay. We would have a stop on the end so they wouldn't go too far. Yeah. We'd have a stop so it wouldn't go in there and then like a peg and it'd go just right to here. We'd be on there. And then on the end, all we had to do was put the plate on there. We had a line drawn across here so you knew your center mark on here. We had the thickness figured out so we would adjust it so it's for this batch of like 20 or 30 that are that same thickness. And then we could have to adjust each one. But when you're looking at the domino, can you see that the lines and stuff on here? More? More? No, you're good. Okay, you have the line in the center with a hole in it. You would line that onto your line on there. So you have to make sure that you make your line on the part here thick enough that you can see it. You set it over there because you'll be able to see it right through there. And then there's a point in the middle. So all you got to do is put it right to that point. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, that's good. You put it right to the point, push it in, and push the domino in. So you, uh, the domino is one of the things I didn't really want to buy in the beginning. I borrowed one from a guy about four times when we were working on the Glancy bench. And I hate borrowing a tool. This is $1,000. Well, the price went up in January, so it's probably more than $1,000 for this one part you hold in your hand. Fest Tools does a great job, but they like to charge for it. And I debated about it for a long time, but like I said, I, I hate to borrow something and then mess it up. So anyway, that was, that's what talked me into here. And since getting it, we've used it for 20 different projects, you know, besides canes and different things. And it's amazing what it's used for, you know, being this isn't an advertisement for Domino. Do you have any questions? <laughs> no questions? How many people want to come out and play? We don't have to be there next Tuesday, but you're welcome to be over there. We would like to, uh, you know, we've usually got about seven or eight people that show up there each day, but this next Tuesday, we can put like 20 people to work at the same time. And uh, we won't pop circuit breakers this time, and I'd be thrilled to have y'all. So. Chompers across the breakers? <laughs> yeah. yeah, put the quarters in there. Do they still do that? <laughs> Are you going to do bandsaw work today? Yeah, one thing I didn't talk about was the bandsaw. Okay, let me, let me go do that move. Edit it back in. When we have the, the cane pattern, okay, when we have the patterns on here, we draw them out like he, like he was showing you. We had like the two sides. We choose a saber saw to get in between. That was one of our methods that we did to break them apart because if you get it too close, I tried to use every inch of the wood you could. And if, the, if it's only that wide, we put one there, we could put another one here and still get two out of the same thing. We had to watch out. There's like, this is not a knot, but if there was a knot, we had to go around it and not hit it into there. So that was this part of it. We separated it with uh, the saber saw or the jigsaw. And some of the renditions we did, we found out some people could not cut very well with a bandsaw. <laughs> and I have two bandsaws. I have an 18 inch and I have a jet that's a 14 inch. The 18 inch has got a half inch blade and I have a 3 16th blade on the, on the 14 inch. So, we found out when we had the original the patterns with the holes in it, we took a Forster bit. Now the original design here was a, a more narrow hole than what this is. We couldn't get in there with much, but we took a Forster bit and went in this end and this end. So you had the round part, so you didn't have to turn all the way around. And then we just took a scroll saw, scroll saw to go in between them. Right? And then on this one here, we could put a force a bit there. So if you're not doing those curves there, you don't have as much turning to do. So we did away with these after a while. But when we go in to cut these now, when we have this pattern, this is our pattern we're using from now on. It's straight, strong, everything's good about it. And we take the bigger bandsaw, which I don't really need to have it on here, but we take the straight half-inch blade and we go all the way to like here. And do the same thing on the other side right to here. And then we switch over to the smaller bandsaw. Because you can get this end. You can turn all the way around and make all the curves and everything fine with that little 3 16 blade. And that, that's how we did it on there. It makes a big difference. So we had one guy on one end. I think Glenn was doing it last time on the big bandsaw. 
and we went through like 70 or 80 of them in one day. He would get them all to this point. He'd give it to me, and I'd take it there and put on a little bandsaw. So it'd take him like, you know, two minutes on here, and it'd take me about 10 minutes on this one, and we'd have it all cut out. And it really was a great method. So our, our methods have changed over the years, different things that we did and that improved it for us. And like I said, we went from the two handles to one. I did like the two handles. I like the feel of it, like the look of it. But if we're going to do it in a higher volume to do it for the people in the VA, I want something that's strong, sturdy, and looks great. I do need to talk about the, the finishing process that we did here. Now, we've had Bob, we've had myself, we've had a few other people that actually did the spraying on there. So when we get the canes all done with this part, it's all sanded, everybody's done it all by hand. We take the, we have two pressure pot spray, uh, spray gun systems. Uh, one is Bob's, one is mine. One has got sandy sewer on it, and one has got the, the lacquer. So we spray it with a uh, regular sandy sewer. You get it done there, we let it dry out for a while, then we got people that are inside after the dry. They take 220, they sand it all off, make sure it's all smoothed out, because everything you spray on it does not go on, flow on perfect on when you're spraying out of a spray gun. And they spray it down, make sure they, they can, that way they can look at it. We dust off the sandy sewers. Do you dust all that off, make sure it looks good, and then they bring it back out, and then we spray it with uh, regular lacquer. Now, when you're done with the lacquer, it looks good, but it feels terrible. These are the two. This one is completely sanded, and it just feels great. This one, I'm going to put them around there so you can feel it. It is rough, you know, because just little bumps that are on there. So let me hand these to you. Feel those and send them around. So once you get done with it, you take just uh, mineral spirits. Mineral spirits, I got right this time. You take the mineral spirits and uh, the steel wool, and you rub that thing off. It's, it's amazing just in a couple of seconds how it changes from one texture to the other. And then we dry it off down there, let them dry out from there. And then we turn them over to Mina and she can put them on. The last one we gave her, I think it was like 61 or 63 canes or something like that. And we kept about eight out, which was really good because we had about four or five people that are, you know, had a brother or a cousin or something. We don't give them away to anybody that's not a vet. If you want, your sister needs one and she wasn't a vet, come on by, we'll help you make a cane or something. But the people are donating wood for the purpose of us to make them for the VA and for the veterans. I'm not giving it out to anything else. So, you know, if you got somebody that needs one that is a vet, I'll be glad to give it to them. We can set it up and do that. But that's where it goes. Questions? Part of what Mina didn't tell you about when her dad goes shopping to Walmart or something like that, and he sees somebody with one of the aluminum metal canes that uh, the VA is giving out to people. He'll go up and ask him if they're a veteran. If he is, they take him out to the car, and she, he's got them in his trunk, and he'll cut it off, fit it for him, and give him one of the canes right there, which I'm sure that thrills the people really a lot. You see them wearing their veteran hats or whatever, and it, even in anywhere, restaurants, it, there was a Waffle House I gave a guy that... Yeah. Yeah. I usually don't have any with me to, to do that, but I think that's a nice process, you know, you know, just you're not expecting anything and then all of a sudden you walk away with a really nice looking cane and, and it doesn't cost them anything, so that's great. So any more questions? Yeah. It's not so much a question. So can we put GoFundMe and send an email out for it to let people know the address? Was it? It, it, was, it was on our it was on the newsletter. We can put that out again. Uh, you know, we we brought in like two hundred fifty dollars total out of that thing, which I wasn't going to touch it till we had more money in there. One of the things is, the first time your dad came, we passed the hat. If you're like me, you tend to forget. You know, oh yeah, I'll get to it tomorrow. Tomorrow. And the first time we passed that, and I think we we raised some money. So if I can, if anybody wants to join in. All right, we're going to lunch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mina, you need some uh, some patches. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. All right, I appreciate everybody coming out. And uh, if you want to come out Tuesday, Tuesday is our first starting date. And almost every day of the week I am there. So if you can't make it there Tuesday, but you could make it there another day, we will have plenty of work to do. Anyway, thanks for coming out. Have a great day. And we're getting out of here early. Thank <laughs> you.